Hey everybody, happy Wednesday to you. Pastor Jeff here from Christ Church in South Philly. This week in the daily devotionals, I've been talking about joy and how we can cultivate having more joy in our life. And that's an important thing to talk about because the Bible says the joy of God, that's our strength. And so if we want strength to make it through these unsettling times, then we need to know more and more God's path to cultivating and experiencing joy in our life. But today I want to talk about a danger there can be to our joy, something that can can choke out joy in our lives. This danger is pointed out to us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 15, which says, See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, and that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble. Bitterness causes so much trouble in our life. And one of the things that can cause trouble with is that bitterness, like a weed growing in a garden, can choke out what is healthy. And so we can try to trying to grow joy in our lives, and we can be trying to cultivate a healthy, joyful life. But if you have, you know, just weeds of bitterness everywhere, weeds will always overwhelm the healthy fruit or the healthy flower. And so we can't have the health of joy in our lives if we also have bitterness at the same time. In short, it's going to be really hard to be joyful in the present if we are bitter about the past. But how do we do with, deal with that? How do we deal with the wrongs that have been done with us? Like the things that we can maybe legitimately be holding on to because they were very, very painful. How do we deal with the past? Well, you know, I don't think it's going to be helpful to get a little, you know, meme out there or a little coffee mug with something like, hey, you got to put your past behind you and, you know, don't don't live in the past, live in, live in the now and just all these little sayings we can do. And, you know, sayings don't help. You know, sayings are like kind of having like a rug that just goes over garbage. It's like, eh, it might look nice for a second, but it's just superficial. The garbage is still there and if you don't deal with the garbage. It's just going to grow and stink. God wants to deal with it. God, God wants to, doesn't say, hey, listen, don't, don't just cover over the root. No, he says up uproot the root of bitterness. He says, deal with really the core issue and what's going on. So here's how we deal with the core issue and root of what's going on. Um, He tells us in verse 15 that there's a relationship between our bitterness and our experience of God's grace. Because he starts this verse by saying, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. Now, to obtain does not mean to earn God's grace, because grace by its definition means that it is undeserved, it's unearned. Right, Grace is what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. When Jesus came and lived the perfect life that we could never live, and he died on the cross for our sins, and then rose to new life to prove that he truly is God, and if we have faith in him, we can rise to new life in him, uh, with him for eternity, forever. Like that That's the grace of God. It's all what God has done for us in Christ, which is not something that we can earn, but something God's done. So this word obtain doesn't mean that we obtain that we buy it. It means obtain in the sense that like we don't want to fall short of it. And that's why other translations actually will will say this, hey, don't don't fail to fall short of the grace of God. I mean, God's grace is here. It's this beautiful, amazing, incredible gift that God wants us to experience. But we can fall short of it. Like we, we don't fully experience and know and, and truly have embraced all of God's grace if we're holding on to bitterness at the same time. Because one thing that, you know, God's grace it's like it's like weed killer. You know, God's grace is like it's like a spray of raid. Like when you put God's grace on weed, uh, on the weed of, of bitterness, God's grace will, will shrivel it up. Here's why. When we think about how God has been so gracious to us in Jesus, we think about the fact that God is not going to hold our wrongs against us because they were already held against Christ on the cross. Like when Jesus took all of our past and carried it up on his back on that black day of Good Friday. And he died on the cross for every wrong that we've done. Like when we come to the cross of grace and we see Christ there and all he's done for us, it's really hard to hold on to things that that have been done to us when we see all that Christ has done for us. Grace kind of just naturally shrivels up bitterness. And I know sometimes one of the things that can really keep us bitter is like lack of closure. It's like, oh, well, this person's never even asked for my forgiveness. And so how can I forgive them? How can I not be bitter when, when they haven't even, you know, apologized for what they've done wrong? But grace shows us the solution to that also, doesn't it? 
Because Jesus didn't die for us when we were asking him to. Jesus didn't wait for us to ask for his forgiveness to come and proactively forgive us. No, grace is all about God showing the initiative to us. Grace is God's choice of who he wants to be to us. And so we can choose who we want to be. We don't, we don't need to ask you know, people for, for them to don't demand to, to forgive us. Like, we don't, we don't need that closure. Is it helpful? Sure. If they want to do that, praise God. Like, they should do that. Like, that would be good for their souls. But for us, like, we can choose to forgive, not because someone is asking for forgiveness. We can choose to forgive because that's who we choose to be. We choose to be a gracious and forgiving person because that's how we've been treating Christ. And so if you've got, if you've got some bitterness in your life, if you've got some, some, you know, weeds that maybe have been choking out joy, then I think there's deeper experiences of joy that God wants you to have. Not through trying harder to forgive, not through trying harder to be a better person and not be bitter. No, God wants you to experience more of his grace. Like study the grace of God. Do a word study on that in scripture. Look at God's amazing, incredible grace. Think afresh about the gospel. Daily meditate on it. And as you do, as the gospel of grace gets down more and more in your heart, oh, grace will uproot bitterness and will leave you with greater joy. I hope that encourages you and gives you something to think about. I'll see you tomorrow with another Daily Devotional. God bless.